Hey, Eloise here. I'm an intuitive healer based in the UK. Welcome to my channel. If you've not been here before, I drop a new video every Monday. Some of my subscribers didn't realize that, so maybe I should start telling you. Hi. <laughs> so, as I sit down today to go, what does everyone need to know? The concept of dis disempowering people in clinic came into my head. So, we're going to discuss this this week because it's important if you're a therapist, if you're receiving therapy, if you're looking for a therapist, this is a great topic that we need to talk about. So let's dive in. A couple of years ago, I ended up at a house party and I got into a three hour conversation with this guy telling me that my job disempowered people. And I was like, it was a really interesting conversation. <laughs> and I was agreeing with him in a lot of ways, but not the way I work, if that makes sense. So um, it was really an interesting conversation. And um, I'm very grateful for that conversation because it was interesting to actually sit and look at this. So the way I work, and if you're choosing a therapist, maybe you want to find someone like me, is that I want to empower my clients to heal themselves. This is about people taking responsibility for their own health and healing journey. I am just here and available as a little bit of space holding, just to maybe hold the odd mirror up and show you what's going on and guide, you know, ask your body to help guide you on your healing journey. I'm facilitating you I'm holding space for you I'm not trying to fix you now if we come as a therapist into um, the role of, of, of the therapist or the healer or whatever we want to label ourselves as that day um, that sometimes bring you know I call myself an intuitive healer but am I ever healing anyone no they're healing themselves but as a label, kind of people get what it is. You can't have a whole five hour conversation in one word. <laughs> it's quite complicated. So I show up and I ask people's bodies what they need help with. And all I'm doing is observing it. I'm just like pointing at it going, hey, body, you need to look at this. Because we get overwhelmed and overloaded. Like we all do. You know, from time to time, we all get a bit like, oh, I've got too much to do. Our bodies get like that too. So the body gets overloaded and overwhelmed and it can't see the wood for the trees. It doesn't know where to start. You know, there's loads of fires going on and there's loads of ha happening and oh, the sun's come out. And, uh, you know, it doesn't know where to start. So it's like tuning into that bit that keeps you ticking over and going, OK, out of all the things we could do, what do you need to pay attention to? And then I'm highlighting it so that your body can go, oh, okay, I'll do that first. Takes a lot of stress off it. And then it can go, oh, okay, now I can do it, take care of that. And I can take care of that. And it'll go through a little ripple effect of healing itself. All I'm doing is just helping to facilitate and instigate the start of that process. And then you go away for a few weeks and you process and you go through that ripple effect. And then your body will be like, OK, now's a good time to come back and get another little push. <laughs> I'm holding space for people and helping their body to facilitate their own healing. I'm not here fixing anyone. And I'm very clear on that, you know, and people come expecting me to fix all their problems for them and it's like well you know if you sit on your couch every day and you never do any exercise and you don't drink any water and you <laughs> never take your green never eat your greens you know <laughs> it's like there's gonna be a limit to how much a therapist can help you with you have to take responsibility for your own health do you have to be 100 percent healthy and active and everything no your body is going to have different requirements from everyone else. And your lifestyle is going to dictate some of what you can do, how you're wired, whether you actually enjoy exercising or you found some exercise that is fun yet. 
highly recommend finding fun the size um <laughs> you know you have to take responsibility for yourself yes there's going to be boundaries and yes you know some people physically cannot exercise for you know maybe with a disability or something going on so we've all got like a you know a capacity for what we can take responsibility for and actually do we don't have to be 100 percent perfect but we at least have to be making some effort to be healthy otherwise you go to your therapist and it's like where do i start you know the body <laughs> i mean the body can tell us but <laughs> it's, it's too much so we need to take responsibility for ourselves. We need to take responsibility for our health. And we want to work with therapists and practitioners who understand that people need to take responsibility for you. We're not here to fix someone. Now, there are modalities that have a different ethos or a different energy to them. But that's my take on this. So am I disempowering my clients? No. I don't see it in that shape or form. It can get to a point where there may be a little bit of codependency going on. And if that occurs, like they're looking to me to save them in some way, I normally will move them on. You know, it's time for someone else. And we've got to be with healthy boundaries with clients. That also helps them to take responsibility for their own journey. I'm not here to save everybody. <laughs> I'm not here to fix everybody. I'm here offering my services to help facilitate you to heal yourself. You have to take responsibility for your health. And booking a session with me is part of that. But I can't do everything. You have to do something as well. So it's really, you know, I'm not coming from that energy of I'm going to save you and fix all your problems. You must come to me forever for that <laughs> yeah you might need more than one session because it took a while to get into the pickle that we need to unravel but i want to work with people who know when they need a session like i was talking to one of my clients this morning she's like i'm intuitive enough now i've had enough sessions with you over the years that i know when i need a session and she's like, and that's great, because it's like her body telling her, it's like, okay, now it's time to book in another session with Eloise. So it might be like six months, I haven't done a session for her. It could be a year, it could just be a couple of months. But she'll book in when she feels she needs it. And that's part of that healthy space that she's able to be in to take responsibility for herself and her own healing. So if you're a therapist, we need to have boundaries of clients. We need to make sure we're empowering them, not disempowering them. I was joking with some people the other day. I'd be a really bad cult leader because I'd be like, no, you're all amazing. <laughs> it's just funny. Like, you know, I totally believe everybody has amazing gifts and talents and potential. And we all need to be able to go out into the world and do what we're great at and what we're like, I don't know, wired for. And I, I'm wired for doing this. So. <laughs> and that's fun. It's great. I love supporting and helping people to heal. And helping them to take responsibility and getting to that space where they're in tune with their bodies enough to know what they need, be that a glass of water, a cucumber, I don't know, uh, <laughs> or a session. That's empowering them. So, we, you know, if you're a therapist, we need to make sure that we're not disempowering our clients. We're not coming from that space to try and heal them because that's a lot of pressure on a therapist as well. If you go to a therapist expecting them in one session to heal all your issues, good luck. Um, I have had miracle clients where I've cleared a lot of stuff up, but they haven't walked out of the room enlightened and all fixed. <laughs> so it's going to be something going on. So if we come with that energy that we think we can cure everything, that, that doesn't empower the client either. It needs to be this balance. And so if you're a therapist, it's something to be aware of and really know. If you're looking for a therapist, yeah, you're going to be drawn to the people that resonate 
um, with you as well. And you're going to, you might find a therapist who is like, just, you know, I don't know, I always want to say, don't like saying like a couple of steps ahead, but I always say I can't take a client somewhere unless I've been there myself. So everything that I heal and observe in my world helps me to help my clients. So my journey and my healing journey supports all my clients as well. So I do a lot of work on myself. You know, I'm always doing something, but I follow the energy. I follow what my body wants. I follow what catches my attention. I know when I need a session and when I just need some time to rest or go for a walk or have a glass of water or, you know, <laughs> whatever it be. And that, empowers me to empower my clients so you know this is a conversation like all these conversations that could go on a long while we could really dive into all the ethics and all the avenues of this topic but i'd be interested in hearing what you think have you had a therapist who maybe wasn't empowering you if that's the case move on and find someone else who is willing to be there in the capacity that you need. Um, you know, I'm not in the capacity that everybody wants. You know, I do all my sessions online at a distance and I don't talk to my clients. So it's just the way that I'm wired and the way that my clinic's evolved. And it works really well for a certain amount of people. Other people, they want face on face time. They want to go in and get someone to put their hands on them. And, you know, touch is so important. I always tell my clients, go and get a massage. Go and do things that are physical as well as seeing me. Because you need that. You need that. Your body craves it as well. So, you know, we can have a whole series of things that are supporting and helping our body and our system. It doesn't just have to be all on one thing. But we need to find what matches for us. And it can be like clients come to me, they have a few sessions and they're like, actually, I want to go and see someone locally who can touch me and give me a hug at the end. You know, <laughs> I can't do that. So you know, <laughs> it's like it works. And, you know, I'm not always available in the capacity that some people's bodies need. And that's fine. I'm not here to fix everyone on the planet. <laughs> so therapist also find what works for you it's about working for you as much as the the client and clients find a therapist that meets your needs like it has to be a win-win for everybody for for things to work out and you know would i love to give all my clients a hug at the end of the session absolutely <laughs> and when i see actually get to see them i'm like oh they've got like years of hugs to make up for <laughs> and I, I can't be there in that capacity and do the work that I'm supposed to be here to do. So if you ever are in the Brighton area, though, come and book a bar session. I love doing running bars on people, <laughs> touching people's heads, at least. <laughs> and you get a hug at the end. Guarantee that. Anyway, I'm going off topic because there's so many things in my head that we could talk about. So. Share below if you've had an experience with a therapist that maybe wasn't great. Don't name them. But, you know, <laughs> share if you've had an experience. Or if you're a therapist, if you had a client get into an interesting situation, I'd love to hear from you. You can always email me if you don't want to put it in the comments. And if you want to try out a session with me, there'll be some links below to some free sessions that you can sign up for and get some space held for you around some specific topics <laughs> anyway before the sun completely wipes me out and turns me into a deck chair i'm gonna go take care have a great week bye